Clonmel County Tipperary has an extra air of excitement about it today because the RIAC VARD National Rally Championship has come to town. The Kent's Corporation Stone Throwers Rally, organised by the Tipperary Motor Club, is always one of the highlights of this one-day series, and this beautiful town, which is cloaked by the Cumra Mountains to the south and Slievenamon to the northeast, has welcomed the 120 crews with open arms. It's not a question of who's going to win the stone throwers, as this is Frank Myers' country, and if the Clonee driver doesn't win, it'll be nothing short of a Clonmel catastrophe. But behind his Supermac Cosworth, there's the battle for the national championship between two northern drivers, Ian Greer and John Galise. Outside Heron's Hotel, there's Mar Mania, as the crowds prepare for the 11 stages. Amongst the fans outside, mother and father Mar. Frank, it's not a question of what happens if you win it, but what happens if you don't win this one? Well, I got to try my best and hopefully the car will live up to its standards and like it did at Clare. Um, it's going to be still a tough event to go through three stages without doing any harm and the three good stages and the last one is very, very quick. I know the second one very well but I still have never driven it in a particular way it's been done now. Um, the first one is very tight and we're just going to have to see how the opposition is going to go. Well, is it the second stage that starts literally right opposite your door? Right opposite our door, but it's not sleeping them on. Frank and co-driver Gareth O'Callaghan carry our onboard camera, but John Galise prefers to keep out of the limelight. Various people have worked out the permutations. I haven't studied them. I'm just going to do each rally as it is. I'm going to try my best today. I'm not sure if Ian has signed on or not. Uh, he's playing a tactical game, so I'll just go handy. Ian Greer has indeed signed on. The interesting top ten includes Ken Colbert's Metro 6R4 with Jerry McVeigh calling the notes. David Flynn and Damien Morrissey in their TPR bodied Metro. And Stephen Murphy and Joe Deacon in the Statoil Sierra Cosworth. Three, two, one. Go! Oh, that's one. True dip. Stage one runs up along the foothills of Slievenamon towards Feathered. It's an opportunity for Frank and 2FM DJ Gareth to settle in. Repeat, turn right six. Gravel, 80. Right two, into brow. Left three, sudden right three. And settle in they do in very impressive manner. They're nine seconds quicker than anyone else. In the right six. And left six. Don't cut. Sudden turn right six. Repeat. Sudden turn right six. Into Mucky right three. Into overbrow Mucky right four. Sudden left five. Through kicks. Long right three over brow downhill. Ian Greer isn't worried about Frank. It's the car behind him and of John Galise he has to keep an eye on. But even on this first stage, people are having problems. For Mick Farrell, it breaks. And George Cullen's having similar problems. Richard Hall and Mike Gibson in their Manta 400 will only complete the first stage. The transmission sidelines them. And there's only one Kent's car, Gus Carney's. Andrew never made it to the start. Noel Conaty is obviously going to be one of the entertainers of the event. Start of stage two, and we were within a hundred yards of Frank Myers' home. And this Left one has everything, plus. including a farmyard. Into caution, don't cut right four. Left four, over bridge bump into left three plus plus gravel. Into right three plus, and sudden left. 
caution. Left six, right six. By the end of stage two, Frank will have a 41 second advantage. With driving like this, is it any wonder that Gareth's getting excited? Center of a bro, 82 kinks. Ian Greer is in second place. The Hillsborough driver has started his championship bid in fine style. Ken Colbert's third, just five seconds behind the Manta. Stephen Murphy, in his usual form, has started conservatively. He's two seconds ahead of the similar car of John Gillies, who completes the top five. Eric Smith's Cosworth engine Mark II Escort is flying. But not so Mick Farrell. The brand new engine and his Cosworth has expired. Naturally, the RD driver is very disappointed. Tom Spence is motoring his Metro in fine style. But Tom Holton's Cosworth rolls to a halt on stage two, just as it did in Killarney, with transmission trouble. That's a lively Luke McCarthy, who's not too gentle on his transmission. It's the end of the rally for the meat driver. Shove it up the spot. <laughs> but his Monaghan mate, Niall McGuire, is as always in spectacular form. As Eamon McAleenan goes through, we talk to Tom Holden. Thomas, I'm sure you'd like to be doing that. I would have tried, yeah. Uh, this is the second time you've come with me in this circumstances. We, the windscreen snapped half down the straight, the drive shaft broke. So we're going up further for the day. Just two stages, eh? Two Not stages, two. Yeah. yeah. One and a half. <laughs> Very disappointing. Oh, yeah, it is. We're in contention in the class and the championship, so I don't know why we'd leave us now. So, play it by ear and we go to the next event. <laughs> Both man and beast among the spectators are enjoying the big entertainment here at Ballylusky Crossroads. stage of the loop and Frank Maher continues to dominate. But there's a new second place. Stephen Murphy has moved up two places. Ken Colbert is still third in his metro. And here's the reason for the change. As these pictures from Pat Sullivan show, the Manta's gone straight on at a 90 left. It's a time-consuming mistake, and it's certainly not going to help Ian Greer's championship hopes. Fortunately, the damage is mainly cosmetic. John Galise must now benefit from Greer's mistake.
David Flynn has lost his intercom, and Paul Harris in his amazing Opel engine Sunbeam is now up to sixth place. Clonmel service, and no problems for the rally leader, but at the Greer camp, there's furious work going on. Ian, obviously uh, you've had a problem here. Yes, on uh, stage three there, the last one there, before service, come down at the junction. Seemed to be a lot of gravel about, and our foot slipped off, foot slipped off the brake paddle. We just cleared into a bank. Lost the eight seconds. Hopefully the car steering is okay and the car feels okay and the braking, so it's just a bit of body work at the front. Eight seconds isn't too serious. It's not too bad. We'll drive eight seconds up and then losing eight seconds, but we're still here and we're going, so that's the main thing. The Carney family are also in trouble. Uh, one competitor and one spectator, when well, we should have had two Carney competitors. What happened? Better ask you, Andrew. Well, from last night onwards, as you know, we had gearbox problems, and this morning on the way to the start ramp, we thought we had them solved, but we stripped the crown, stripped the crown wheel and pinion on the way to the ramp, and that's us finished for today. But we've one survivor, and we'll make it through with that. Well, that was a bit unfortunate, Gus. I think maybe I arranged for him to be out of the rally. <laughs> as maybe you might have beaten me in my own home ground. He, he had practiced it a lot, so. So the full team's behind you now, anyway. So I have a full team, so I should make it, yeah. Now the competitors repeat the same loop of three stages twice more. Periodic rain isn't helping the crew's tyre choice. Frank continues his demonstration and he's using this local event as a preparation run for the Manx International Rally in September. This is what Fally Lusky Crossroads looks like from the bumper cam. Frank will have a spin on this loop, but it doesn't affect his overall position. Group N, John O'Brien leads, despite a puncture on stage five. Fergal Allen is second, but he's had problems hearing the intercom. And Gus Carney is now motoring well. That's more than can be said for Michael Smallwood and Declan Tumulty. We're grateful to John O'Rourke for those spectacular pictures. Michael and Declan are protected by their roll cage, but the marshal has taken some alert action to avoid trouble. The Tipperary Motor Club have arranged a fabulous finale for the people of Clonmel. There's live music and a quad demonstration for the warm-up act, and the local hero Frank Mahar is our jockey round the perimeter of the race course. Mel's hero has done exactly what was expected of him, and Gareth has enjoyed every moment of the high-speed trip. The cigars are being passed around in the Maurer family, but there are others with just cause for celebration. Ian Greer and Dean Beckett to become the 1993 RIAC Vard National Rally Champion. Rally Championship 93. And he deserved it. Congratulations, Ian. We, the news is you've won the championship. Yes, um, I'm delighted. Still takes me a while for it to sink in, but um, it's marvellous. Really marvellous. But the day belongs to Frank Marr, the winner of the Kent's Corporation Stone Throwers Rally, with Stephen Murphy just over a minute behind, and the new champions Ian Greer and Dean Beckett in third place. <laughs>